was really good. Oh, don't know what it is about sauerkraut, but it just, it smells so good. It kind of maintains all of its beautiful characteristics that you get with cabbage. You kind of get that mustardy spice with it and the lovely onions give it a little twang. It's, it's really good. Welcome! Hope you're having a great one, and uh, I can use the term homebrew because this was fermented, so uh, we're still in the bounds of cool. So, what we're going to be doing today is, uh, well, doing the part two to the sauerkraut that we started actually a month ago, a little bit over a month ago. So it's had, unlike before where I wanted it to be a half kraut, sort of a middle of the road continental kraut, uh, this is the full, the full kraut. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that. So, if you haven't seen the part one video, uh, the link, link's up there. So, well, you can see what we did. Pretty cool. So, I'm going to draw your attention to this random open bottle. I actually thought I drank all of this a long time ago, and I was clearing out my other fridge, that is not my brewing fridge, and found the homemade coffee liqueur. Oh, so too. So, uh, I've been sampling just a little bit of my fine wares. Mm. It is still good. It has those coffee notes. It's actually kind of got the vanilla, a little bit chocolatey. Oh, and of course that lovely rum edge. You really need rum to make coffee liqueur. Oh, so good. Anyway, on with the video. So we know the fermentation has been completed. The sauerkraut is here, it's looking looking really good there is no obvious signs of mold i will say this cabbage was kind of juicy um, as far as it goes worked it really good with my hands i got some fantastic comments uh saying you know to use a stick and stuff and you can but uh, I, I i like the hands hands you just you just can't beat using your hands for the texture so i'm going to take out my lovely water weight because uh, we don't need that anymore and we just put that to one side because we really need to make sure no bits got to the surface because if they did that's a place where mold and all that rubbish will uh, congregate and make it taste funny you can skim it off but i prefer not to do that if it's got mold it's gonna work its way in so this is the first sort of oh that smells so good so it has a kind of peppery smell from the cabbage getting a little bit of the onion a little bit of the garlic Oh, now I could just grab a spoon and dig in because it looks pretty damn fine, but I'm not silly. I'm not, I'm really not. So what I'm going to do is I've got some pH paper strips, um, universal indicator all the way from Chinois. And uh, these are actually pretty accurate. I'm, I'm going to say these are much better than pH pens because, uh, well, they just are. You can't really go wrong with pH paper. So what we're going to do is I'm going to dip one of these lovely sticky things in here. Once I get one. And uh, we're going to compare. So what we want it to be is under 4.5 pH. So we're looking for a pH of about 4. That's what we want. Because, um, you know, there's always a little bit of inaccuracy in everything we do. So somewhere between 3 and 4 means this is done, it's perfect, it's good to eat. And we don't have botulism, because someone's gonna ask, so in it goes. Go. So we're just going to give it a couple of seconds just to work its magic because well, it needs to do that. And uh, looking at my pH paper, it is 
Oh, it's looking pretty good actually. It's not quite three, but it's not quite yet. Yeah, it's pretty much four. So we've got sort of four-ish percent, four-ish percent, the pH of about four. I will speak English. So that means that this is perfectly safe to eat. Now, um, peace of mind. That's what we're going for, peace of mind. Now, if you follow the same recipe and you use the same amount of salt, you should be perfectly fine. But at the same time, it's, it's best, best just to double check. You don't want a case of the screaming trots because, uh, yeah, that's, that's not good. So, <laughs> This means it's safe. I got a spoon and I'm not afraid to dig in. I really like sauerkraut, so I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. Oh, now the color has very changed very slightly. It is not quite as green as it was, but that's cool. And whoa. oh, wow, if you move it around, you really get that uh, sauerkraut flavor. So I got uh, a nice bit of sauerkraut. Mmm. Now, with peppery, it's got sour to it, a bit salty. Mmm. It's really good. Uh, I'm gonna have another one for the can. Oh, it's got a little bit of spice to it. That's a little bit from the garlic. Mmm. Mmm. Almost mustardy. But it is really tasty. Now you can just eat sauerkraut on its own, but it's much better as a side dish. Mm -hmm. You know, putting them on hot dogs, maybe on burgers, just adding a little bit extra. Because, well, this is really good for you. Who'd have known? So uh, I've got to counter out that with uh, some alcohol. Wow. If I had the foresight to age this stuff, it'd be even better. Never last that long. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and jar this up. Now what I've got here is a gherkin jar. I have cleaned it. I have sterilized it. You don't need to sterilize it. You can rinse it with very hot water. But make sure you do the whole thing. Otherwise, uh, you end up with fractures. And it's actually fairly straightforward. Grab a spoon, grab your kraut, and then uh, liberally dump it in the jar. Now the great thing about the sauerkraut is that technically you do not need to store this in the fridge. I mean, you don't. It is preserved, it is looking good, and as long as you keep it underneath the water line, it will pretty much keep indefinitely. The only problem with that is it probably won't be under the water line. Uh, we're not going to be weighting this down, so it probably has a shelf life of about, you know, a month, six weeks. Which, again, this, this is a small batch of sauerkraut. Uh, I'm used to doing much bigger ones and, well, they make great little gifts. People are so, uh, they like all the weird stuff. So can we fit this in? Oh, that smells so good. I'm just gonna, just can't help myself. Gonna have another bit. Mmm. Oh, that is good. So the jarring is over and we've got one daddy jar, which uh, I'm going to really enjoy. And we've got a little baby jar right there of authentic sauerkraut. Now you can change the recipe as you see fit, but keep the salt about the same. Um, as you get more into it, you can change the salt amounts. Just use pH paper and test. Testing is king. Don't want any of you to get ill. So, if you enjoyed this video, you know, give us a like, thumbs up, you know, all that stuff. So, if you have any suggestions, stick it in the comments below. And, well, if I like them, I'm going to do them. I've seen one for pickled eggs. And uh, I, I, I love pickled eggs. So, I'm going to be making some of my own pickled eggs. Because uh, it's a little bit different from what you're used to. Just letting you know. And we've got some cool videos coming up. I, I think they're really cool, related to all this type of stuff. So, yeah, I think I've said it all. Don't forget to check out some of the other videos and uh, have a drink. Eat some sauerkraut. Cheers. Catch you later.